Well, good morning and welcome to Online Church. My name is Mike Hardy, and it's a privilege to invite you to be part of this online gathering today. Today is Thanksgiving Sunday, and this is a really significant time for us as a church where we come together to give thanks, to actually pause and to reflect on the last year and to consider all the things that we're grateful for both individually and as a corporate community. And it's a really special time. So I really hope that you enjoy our gathering today. And I hope that it's a chance for you to worship, to reflect, uh, to actually hear some great reflections as well as an update on what's happening around the life of Good Life. So I hope that this service today is a real blessing to you as you take time in your own life to give thanks for all that God has done for us and through us in Jesus' name. My name is Rob. I'm a member of uh, Good Life uh, Community Center, the community here, and community being the key word, by the way, because uh, this is much more than a gymnasium or a creche or a church or a cafe. It is a total comprehensive experience. This is a life-changing place, okay? It's a very welcoming, caring place, and it changed my world. Um, it's transformed me physically, mentally, and spiritually. Um, I've, I used to suffer from depression. It's, it's dissipated big time ever since I started coming here. I used to be spiritually bankrupt, and now I, I feel very spiritually enriched because of my, the gratitude I have for this place and, and the commitment that the, the staff and, and, the, and the, the members put into this place. Like it's just, it's a very unique environment. In fact, I don't think I could ever leave the sunny coast and live anywhere else because I know I'd never find a place like this. I've made some amazing friends here. And as soon as I walked in the door, I felt welcome. I could feel there was a spirit here. There was an energy here that was magnetic. I loved it. Hi, I'm Kylie. I'm the operations manager at Good Life. I've been here 11 and a half years and part of the community for 20 years. So 20 years ago, I came to Good Life as a non-believer and I did an Alpha course and then I gave my life to Jesus. That then led my husband and I to bring our three children up here, which was I'm so grateful for because I know that we wouldn't have been able to do that on our own. And I had all these beautiful people pour themselves into their lives and to become the, the children they are now. So I'm really, really grateful for that. And also, it makes me it makes me passionate about telling other people how important the community is and how it is for their children as well. The work side of my life is also really important to me. The people that I get to work with are just beautiful. They're loving, they're kind, they're fun, and they're passionate about what they do. And that makes my job really, really easy. The other part of that is the customers that come into this building. We get to see a diverse range of people. They come in here sometimes thinking they want exercise, but quite often it's for other reasons. They're lonely, they're broken, they're injured, or they just want to have a chat. And that's what makes my day special. I am grateful for the Kids Church building as every morning when you walk in you can do your memory verse and if you get it correct you get a lolly. Then you walk in and you can learn about God and play really fun games related to it. After church I always go down to the cafe and hang out with my friends that I've made along the way and we always take turns buying chips for the group. Good Life Youth has helped me so much over the past year. It feels like I can be myself without being judged, and I have made so many amazing friends here. I am so grateful to everyone who makes this place possible. I am so grateful for the amazing customers that I get to meet and talk to every day, and I'm so grateful for Kylie for helping this run so smoothly. It's a fantastic place to be. I'm so grateful for our facilities that enable our squad families to participate in uh, such a great environment. I'm so grateful for our amazing cafe volunteers who help out and just bring such a warm welcome and vibrancy to our community. I'm so grateful for the men's nights this year. I'm so grateful for the creche team here at Good Life. Yes, I'm so grateful to be working here at Good Life and be part of the community and the team I work with. I'm so grateful for Thursday Good Life Women's Group. 
I'm so grateful that I get to volunteer here in the cafe. I am so grateful for the Good Life Kids programs. I'm grateful for all the families that make up our swim school community. I am so grateful for this community here at Good Life Community Centre. It's such an important practice for us to actually pause in our busy year. The amount of people that have said to me in the last couple of weeks, oh, here we go, you know, it's the crazy season and this is that time of year when everything just gets out of control. And increasingly there's that part of me that, I mean, I hear myself say it. It's just a habit. But that almost wants to cut myself off saying it and say, actually, I'm already making some changes to say we need to redeem this time of the year. We need to actually remember what this time of the year is all about. And it's about what this day is about. Uh, in the United States, our friends there have celebrated Thanksgiving. And as is a tradition at Good Life, we each year on this last Sunday of November, we come together to pause and reflect over the last year, to give thanks to God, to say thank you to our community, and to just allow ourselves to be filled up with gratitude. And so this morning, uh, if I haven't met you before, my name is Mike Hardy, and this day last year, Teresa and I were announced to be the new lead pastors at Good Life. And that was an exciting day for us. It was an emotional day because we'd wondered, what's our future? What are we going to do? We had all this stuff still stirring in our hearts, and we didn't know where it fitted or where it was going to play out. But we joined this community a year and a half before, and we've fallen in love with the people here. Um, we love the mission and the heart of this place. The very first time I walked into the building here, when some friends of ours in Sydney um, said to us, and we finished up at our last church, they said, hey, when you go to the Sunshine Coast, you've got to check out Good Life. It's your kind of church. And I came in, and I almost broke down crying, but didn't want to look like the widow So um, on the first visit, so I kind of held it together. But I was overwhelmed with what I saw here was what had been in our hearts for a very long time, how we could be the hub of the community, how we could um, utilize the resources that we have to bless and serve beyond even our faith community, and then to be invited to step into this role and have this first year uh, leading here in this community has been an incredible privilege, especially uh, following, you know, Tim and Donna and the many years that they've faithfully served this community, you know, big shoes to step into. And um, this church has got a great heritage. Uh, it's a church that, you know, if you're in around faith circles, almost everyone across the Sunshine Coast knows of this place in this community. It's a rich community. It's a generous community. When I became pastor here, so many friends of mine contacted me on social media across Australia that were sending me messages going, are you a good life? Man, I've been to that place. We've done tours of that site. We've gone there to, to learn from the team there. And I'm like, yeah, this is where I am. And they're like, that's amazing. And there hasn't been a day this year where there hasn't been that sense of um, humility and awe and gratitude for what it means to be part of this team and this community here. Two weeks ago, a lady came to this church service here and she walked in an hour early and it was her very first time here. She thought it started at 9am and I wanted her to um, basically be the new poster child for turning up to church early. Because as we've said so many times before, when you're new, you turn up early because you're trying to get a feel for it. You, you don't know what you're going to, so you come early and then um, the rest of the community kind of rocks up. But because we're not that church, we're actually the church that welcomes everyone, we all now turn up early, right? Um, yes, that's right. And so anyway, she turned up early and I um, arranged to get her a, a coffee through our cafe here. And she said to me, oh, I already feel so welcome in this place. And then found out that one of our other team members um, offered to get her a coffee. And 
that little moment of just hearing one of our other team members offer the same thing was like, yes, we do that. Because we're always thinking, I'd rather check and rather offer and rather be generous and have someone say, righto, come on, back off. Too much generosity, too much friendliness, too much kindness, too much love. I don't know if I can handle it. Then I came here and I felt like no one saw me, no one welcomed me, and I could leave the place and it didn't matter. And that can happen, but we don't want that to happen. And that's why every one of us that are part of this faith community are increasingly making that commitment to say nobody stands alone. And for that, I'm so grateful. I want to read to you a passage of scripture this morning. Luke chapter 17 says uh, these words. Actually, I just realized it's only on the screen on my notes. Um, I'll read it to you from the screen. As Jesus continued on toward Jerusalem, he reached the border between Galilee and Samaria. Jesus very often hung on the borders between the lands where Jewish people like him were tempted to not go. Because the land of Samaria was a land that the people um, and the Jews, the people of Israel, basically, they didn't like the Samaritans. They saw them as second rate. They saw them as not God's true people. And there was a big division that took place. And there was a lot of hatred. And a lot of Samaritans felt um, isolated and disconnected. And so uh, Jesus is wandering around in this area. And it says, as he entered a village there, 10 men with leprosy stood at a distance. Now, they stood at a distance because they had to. They were required to. They were not allowed to go close to others for fear that their leprosy could spread. And also because they were deemed to be outcasts in society, rejected, not to be part of the regular community. But they were crying out, Jesus, Master, the same word that Jesus' disciples called Jesus. And they said, have mercy on us. Now, I don't know if you've ever been in a desperate situation before where you felt isolated. Leprosy is not an issue for us in our contemporary Western culture today, although in some parts of the world it still is. But there is an isolation that takes place when we feel like the circumstances of our life cause us to have to stand back at a distance from life that is happening around about us. And this can happen for those of us who battle with depression or anxiety, for those of us who have walked a path where we feel like others wouldn't understand, or maybe have hit a financial crisis or a relationship crisis in our life where we feel so disorientated that we don't feel like we can joyfully engage in community around about us. And from whatever that place in our life or that season of our life is, we find ourselves, if we have any sense of hope, crying out, God, have mercy. God, have mercy on me. Do you see me? Do you see my situation that I'm in? And these 10 lepers have obviously heard about who Jesus is through word of mouth and through his going through the different regions. And in this moment, this is their moment to cry out, Jesus, Master. In other words, the one who has authority and ability, have mercy on us. And he looked at them and he said a fascinating phrase. Go show yourselves to the priests which is a funny thing to say. Ten lepers have got leprosy, and he says, first thing, not, okay, you're accepted, you're loved, I'm going to heal you. Hey, what do you want? He just tells them, he gives them a command. I want you to go and show yourselves to the priests. Now, the back story to this is, because lepers were seen as unclean and so couldn't be part of the religious community, the only way that a leper can be liberated to engage in community and religious rituals and activities is to actually be seen by the priest to not have leprosy. They were the ones that would affirm or cause them to have to go and be separated again. 
And so Jesus calls them to an act of faith, to actually in that moment go and show the priest. And I'm, I'm thinking if I'm one of the lepers, I'm going, is he serious? We've got leprosy. Like, that's a weird thing to say, Jesus, who I just called master. Now I'm wondering, are you really? But for whatever reason, because we don't have too much of the background detail and we actually don't have the video footage, these lepers obey Jesus and they start walking off in obedience to him and they show themselves to the priests. That's their intention. And it goes on and says, and as they went, they were cleansed of their leprosy in response to Jesus invitation. And then the next part of the passage goes on and says, one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned around and came back to Jesus shouting, praise God. He's so excited as you would be. And it's hard for us to comprehend this, but my question to you would be, what would it take to happen in your life? For you to have a moment where you cannot help but shout out praise and gratitude and glory to God because something has shifted or changed or been reset in your life that it brings about such a sense of joy and of gratitude. And this man fell to the ground at Jesus' feet, thanking him for what he had done. The word thanking there, the verb there, is the same word that Jesus uses when he breaks uh, bread at the Last Supper, and the word that he uses when he prays in the story of the, the feeding of the 5,000 and the fishes and the loaves. It's this expression of acknowledgement that God is the one who blesses, that God is the source of whom we offer our praise and our gratitude, and we understand that this source is what gives us life. And it goes on and says, this man was a Samaritan. Now, we don't technically know if the other nine were Samaritans or not, but there were two dynamics at play here. We already had a marginalized community of people that were lepers, but then you add on a double marginalized dynamic in that this man's not only a leper, he's also a Samaritan. So he's got two major things working against him and his ability to engage in the community, let alone approach Jesus, who's a Jewish rabbi. This is a crazy thing that he does. But he's so overwhelmed with joy and gratitude that his situation has changed in response to his faith in obeying Jesus' command to go and show himself to the priests. It doesn't even say that he actually got to the priests. It just says, as they went, their leprosy stopped, or they were cleansed of it, before they even got to the priests. Jesus obviously knowing that when they get to the priests, the priest will say, you don't have leprosy, you can engage in the community once again. What a compassionate, gracious, loving Savior Jesus is. That his intention is not just their physical healing, but they're being embraced again in community. What a wonderful thing. And then Jesus asks, didn't I heal 10 men? And when Jesus asks this question, by the way, this is not because he wasn't sure. This is not Jesus going, hmm, hang on a second. Let's do a count again. Or he's asking a question, which is a statement. In other words, come on, I healed 10 and only one of the healed come back? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give, and this is the key phrase here, glory to God except this foreigner, which even that is a loaded phrase when Jesus says it. So to anyone listening to Jesus, they're aware that when Jesus says this, he's pointing out the fact that it's the foreigner, the Samaritan person, who's rejected by the religious elite and generally the Jewish community, who is the one who returns and just in absolute gratitude bows down and praises God. This is an amazing thing. And Jesus said to that man, stand up and go. Your faith 
has healed you. In other words, he's affirming his faith in the first part in responding to Jesus' command to go and see the priest. And in the second, that his faith would go beyond just... I mean, it's not like the other nine lepers went away going, oh, what a bummer, I'm healed, I'm cleansed, just go about our day. I'm sure that they were excited that they were cleansed. But it's the next step that's the critical component in that Jesus affirms this man gets it. He's been blessed, but his heart and his life is overflowing with gratitude and he runs back to the source of the one that to him has provided that cleansing. And the story and the challenge for us in this day in society is for us to say, where has God cleansed us? Where has God healed us? What blessings has God poured into our life? And have we just wandered off into our life and forgotten the source that we are to return to and invited to return to, that grounds us in a way of being that fills us with gratitude. And that's what this day is all about. The chance for us to pause and say, I want to give thanks for this last 12 months. God has healed, restored, blessed, transformed, set minds free, helped people engage in community. The man sitting on the front row here, Rob, in the video that you saw with the Nirvana t-shirt. Good t-shirt, by the way. <laughs> There's a double meaning going on in there. But here's the thing. This man has experienced the life of God, and it flowed out in how you shared that in that video. And for that, I say thank you. But I thank God. And today is our chance to thank God. So I want to take a few moments to highlight a few things where I want to intentionally say, I am so grateful for what God has done this year. What a year it's been. Unfortunately, I can't mention all the different things and all the groups and all the different leaders. And so if I say anything here, please understand there's probably 20 or 30 others that I'm not saying because we can't today. A community this size only takes place because of so many smaller communities of care and love and connection. And so we have so many life groups across our church and so many of our life group leaders that are really the on-the-ground pastors and shepherds that care for and serve our community. And I want to thank them today and acknowledge them and say thank you so much for loving and serving our community. Can we give them a hand today? <laughs> this year uh, we had... Um, you know, uh, Ryan, who's one of our pastors here, or has been one of our pastors here, uh, is now working with Compassion, finish up. And so uh, we had um, Marjan step up and say, I'll take on writing the studies for our groups. And I just want to thank her and acknowledge her today because she's been super faithful in that. And if you're going to write a study based off my sermons, then good luck, because um, they're, they're not as super structured as some people's. Uh, but I want to thank her. But also, uh, between her and some of the guys this year, we, we launched an, an experiment in starting some spiritual retreats. And uh, Marjan led one of those, and Ryan and um, Stu, and did I get it right? Yeah, I said it, yes. Um, uh, led a men's uh, retreat. And at this retreat, there's an opportunity for guys and girls at two different retreats to be able to get together and to share stories, to spend time in silence and reflection, uh, and just take the time to have their souls restored. And you know, after the women's retreat, because Teresa was at that one, Teresa came back and she was so blown away, not only by Marjan's um, leadership and the way she guided that retreat, but every one of the women that went to that retreat came up to me saying, do you know what? In one weekend, the level of connection and rapport built amongst this group was incredible. And it's just established a whole new level of connection. Not only um, that, but the level of just um, spiritual inner transformation that took place just from that one weekend. And so you're going to hear a lot more about our retreat, retreats into the future as we continue to expand and experiment with that. And for that, I'm incredibly grateful. I'm incredibly grateful that one of our neighbors this year um, shared a letter with our team here who had not had the greatest experience with good life in the past, but 
was going through a very difficult time in their life, battling depression and anxiety, and decided to courageously come into the center here and sign up for the groups. And when they came here, they came in and were at the back of classes, and each time they came, bit by bit, they started to experience healing and acceptance and just that, um, that depression and anxiety in their life began to decrease. And they are now like a big fan of this place and deeply involved and serving. And we see them coming in here with a big smile on their face and so grateful, a little bit like you, Rob, for your story, um, that they have got to come in here and be part of this community that's embraced them. And for that, I want to thank all of our gym and sporting teams um, that have created an environment where anyone can come in and feel loved and accepted. I'm so grateful because earlier in the year, I met one of our volunteers in the cafe called Jenny, who came up to me and said to me, how good is this place? And then said, who are you? (laughs) And I said, I'm just one of the team here. And I said, but yeah, this place is pretty good. And she said, and she doesn't come to our church here. She said, I just feel so privileged that I get to be part of this. I get it. This is amazing. We had a similar experience happen with someone in Lifehouse recently who um, wanted to join the team and has then recently been coming along to our faith community here, who's just gone, the light bulb's gone on, and I get it. I get what we're trying to do. I'm seeing the outworking of this through our life house and all of those programs. I'm so grateful for my new friend that I have, and I won't name him in this place, um, but he came along to one of our men's nights this year because they were new to the Sunshine Coast, and his wife saw a poster about the men's nights, and he didn't have any friends up here, And so he courageously just came along to one of the men's night, the one night where it rained and hailed and there was only five of us who rocked up and stood in the Maroochydore Park under a little shelter. But we connected and have become friends now and he now comes to every one of our men's nights and he's like working the room. Like he walks around like he's one of the leaders of it. You know, he's introducing people and connecting people and he just absolutely loves it and he's found community. And it's such a joy to me to watch that. And to see people disconnected, find community. And for that, I'm so grateful for those who lead our men's ministry and those men's nights who create that space of welcome. I'm so grateful that on one of our Sunday night services, we had um, one of our young adults bring their friend who is a Muslim, who doesn't share our faith, and came along and was so impacted on the night, was singing the songs and said, we like Jesus. And I'm like, Probably not as much as we do, but yep, I didn't say that. I was thinking that. And, and it, he just said, this environment is like really great. And then he came along and has been coming to our men's nights. And at every one of our men's gatherings, I've watched the other men that just embrace him and make him feel so welcome in that environment. And I think that's unique and beautiful and looks like the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who went across the boundary lines to actually make people feel welcome and embraced no matter who they are, no matter where they come from. And I'm so grateful for that. I'm so grateful for the day when I hung out with our Lifehouse team up at Lifehouse uh, for a morning tea, and I watched and heard their passion as they serve people in our community. Ruth leads an incredible team of volunteers that do so much work to bless people with furniture and resources, and the amount of stories of people who have gone from homelessness into a new place and then have had their entire units furnished through our community and through Lifehouse is amazing. You heard a couple of weeks ago, Eloise Wellings, um, the Olympian that was here, share the story of how she went out jogging that morning with a random group of people that she decided to join. And when they said, why are you here? And she said, I'm going to be speaking at Good Life. And they, who don't even come to Good Life, started to share great stories about this community because good news spreads. Good news spreads. I'm so grateful for the day that I went upstairs um, to hang out with our teenagers for a Q&A time, of which I didn't have to answer that much, because I was so blown away that Ellie Smith and Krista, every Sunday morning, serve our teenagers in this place. And when, when I sat there, and I listened to our teenagers share on controversial topics and talk about tough things of faith, the compassion and the depth of faith 
and love for God and encouragement of one another filled my heart so much that I went, I'm so excited for my daughter to go into the youth group here next year. And she's pretty excited about that too. Because this is a place where it's safe and young people are cared for and embraced and loved. And oh, it's just my heart was just you know, filled with joy. And I'm so grateful for our team and leaders who serve those young people every week. I'm so grateful for the boost team on a Friday afternoon noon that serve, you know, like tens and tens and like dozens of, of um, young people in the primary school age group in our community that aren't part of our church gatherings here that come in and into this room and have so much fun. And that team that faithfully arrive here and set up and serve them and create a loving, welcoming place. When we turn up here and my kids are running around and play, I walk around and I watch and I observe and I just say, yes, thank you, God, for this amazing team that serves all these kids in our community. It's incredibly uh, wonderful. I'm so grateful that my kids get to grow up in a kids team uh, and uh, in a children's church environment on a Sunday morning. And we have them all in here this morning. Can all the kids that are in the house give me a yell? Awesome. And some of them are going to be up here singing at the end. Uh, but here's the thing. When I went to church as a kid, I had a really good experience. But so many people have had negative and bad experiences in church where it's been an unsafe environment or un not very encouraging or the faith has been so dry. But I'm so excited that Greg and all of the kids team that serve faithfully and sacrifice to love and encourage and build up our children means that my kids... And your kids get to grow up in an environment that's safe, that's fun, because that's the most important thing for kids at this age, is it fun, and they get to experience and learn about a dynamic faith found in our Savior Jesus, and for that I'm incredibly grateful. So thank you to all of our kids team for all that you do. And the last couple of things I want to mention here is this, and there's probably a little bit of personal, um, uh, I don't know sense of relief and hope in me, I want to thank all of our seniors at our church here, because I will be one soon. <laughs> and you guys have created a fun, dynamic, life-giving environment for so many people across the week. Now, many of our church don't get to see in the daytime, because you're all at work, what happens here, but we have so many seniors who find community here. People that when we had our new, um, we had a, a morning tea on here for new people to good life, who, who said to me, I had no friends, but I came along here in the day, in, during the daytime, and I was embraced by this community here, and now this is com my community. And one lady looked me in the eyes, and she said, are you the pastor here? And I said, I don't know. <laughs> Depends what you're going to say. And she had a bit of a laugh, and she said, are you the pastor here? And I said... On a good day? And she said, this place saved my life. That's the power of loving community. And I want to thank all of our seniors for creating an, a, a wonderful future because so many people are isolated and disconnected. And I also want to say thank you for believing in the next generation because there's a whole new generation that we want to share God's love and the good news of the gospel with. And I thank you for your love and your patience and your embracing of our young adults and our youth and the joy and the atmosphere that we want to create in this place. And for that, I just want to say I'm so thankful. I just want to say thank you for the generous community that you are in encouragement the generous community that you are in prayer, the amount of people that have texted me and sent me emails saying I pray for you and Teresa and I pray for the leadership team here every day is so deeply encouraging. And I want to say thank you to the people that have had opportunity because of financial resource to sacrificially give that nobody else knows about, to fund things, to help us out of crisis, to help us in times when it's been super tight, who have just contributed. And I want to say, the work that we're all giving thanks for today can continue because of that. And for that, I'm so thankful. Um, up on the screen, there's going to be a QR code here that will take you directly to our giving page. The second component um, that I want to explain is there's two ways that you can give. And I want to explain them. 
We have a, a, a fund called the ASF Fund, which is the Australian Sports Foundation Fund. It's a tax deductible fund. And when you go to that QR code and our giving page on our website, and you can do this after the service if you need to, there is an opportunity to make a contribution. If you scroll to the bottom of the page, you'll see Australian Sports Foundation. And if you click on that, you can give through that foundation. But I need to explain, we only get to use those funds for uh, work that directly relates to our sports and building the, the, the parts of our building and center here that relate to that. So we can't fund our children's ministry expansion or our youth or young adults ministries from that fund. So if everyone only gave to that fund, we'd end up with a bit of a problem, uh, a few challenges. We still need our regular giving to go to, you'll notice you can hit on the tab uh, for our regular giving on that page. And you can just tap Thanksgiving. So we'll know that this is the day that um, all our Thanksgiving, and we'll share with the church that. I can um, positively tell you that we already received before today a gift of $50,000 for some, for some people from our community on uh, Friday, uh, which is an enormous blessing that we're so grateful for. Um, and um, this is really going to help serve us into our vision into 2023 as we want to expand and reach more people with the love of Christ. So there's those two different ways that you can give. Um, you can literally fill in details on the card if that would suit you. Well, thanks so much for joining us for Online Church today. This next week, we're going to be starting off our Advent series on the surprise elements that we didn't see coming. And we're going to be unpacking some of the really interesting things in the Gospels that none of us would probably have predicted would be part of the Christmas story. So we look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great week.